Hi, I'm Laura Huang, Professor of Management and Entrepreneurship at the Wharton School. It's well known that female entrepreneurs face a significant disadvantage when it comes to receiving funding for their startup ventures, as compared to their male counterparts. In fact, female entrepreneurs receive only about 2% of all venture funding, even though they own 38% of the businesses in the country. Why do you think this is? Well, it's possible that this disadvantage is due to more subtle factors rather than any explicit gender bias. After the entrepreneur finishes laying out their business, they face an evaluation from a panel of investors. So that is where we decide to focus our research. Given that investors use this Q&A period to try and figure out risks and potential upside, perhaps investors are asking male and female entrepreneurs different types of questions. And because of this, female-led ventures are perceived as having too much risk to warrant investment. So we decided to test this assumption by looking at one of the most prominent and influential startup competitions in the world, TechCrunch Disrupt, where the investors are all extremely experienced, active, and successful. What we found was that female entrepreneurs were overwhelmingly asked what we call prevention-focused questions. And surprisingly, this was the case for questions coming from both male and female investors. What this boils down to is that female entrepreneurs were asked more about the potential risks of their business. Things like, how do you plan to retain your customers? Male entrepreneurs, on the other hand, were asked promotion-focused questions, overwhelmingly focused on hopes and advancements and their ideals, questions such as, what major milestones are you targeting for this year? Entrepreneurs were also likely to respond accordingly. When they were asked questions that focused on risk, their answers were also positioned around risk, and vice versa. So these findings suggest that both men and women may sometimes be unwittingly and unintentionally applying gender bias, which is important for us to understand even beyond the entrepreneurship realm. When anyone asks questions, they may be implicitly giving men a chance to talk about their gains, achievements, and successes, and women may not be getting this advantage when they're asked to focus on potential risks. Awareness is a critical first step. The more people recognize that this type of implicit behavior is happening, the more we can prevent it from happening again. And also, keep in mind that while you can't always change someone else's behavior, there are ways to take matters into your own hands. If you recognize that implicit bias is occurring, for example, there are ways that you can stop and redirect. You can certainly listen to the prevention-focused question, but then as soon as the question is done being asked, you can also stop that line of thought in its tracks and deliberately answer with a promotion-oriented response that allows you to redirect attention towards your own strengths. So in doing so, hopefully we can begin to mitigate the types of subtle biases that exist and begin to create a more level playing field.